Hey guys, today I'm going to be explaining how to use the if, then, and else commands in TI Basic for your TI-84, TI-83+, plus, etc. calculators. And so, first of all, I'm on the website semitech.net. If you want to program, it's a great website. So just hop on there if you need to. But let's get started. The if command is a really useful command, and if you start programming, you'll get used to it really fast because you'll be using it a lot. Um, so the basic thing is you put if and then a condition and if the condition is met right after it it will run that code that you put right after it if this is true and then a l adding a little bit more if you put then after your condition it will execute multiple lines of code while before it would only execute this this specific line no matter how long it is it'll only execute that line if you want it to execute multiple lines, put then. And then if you have to, or if you put then, make sure you put end once you're done with your code because you don't want it to keep going forever. End is what ends the then because then has no limit. And then, like I said, it, the if activates when the condition is true, but what is true? True is anything equal to one in Boolean logic, and one is true, zero is false in Boolean logic. And so this works for anything. A equals one, that will end up being one, and it's true. Two plus two equals four, that is still true. Now B equals zero, that is false, so it won't work. So any my first examples will all execute the code here if you copy it down here. But the last example, when I said B equals zero, that will not work in this. It will skip over this code because it is not true. Next we get to the else command, which activates on the opposite conditions when it's not true. So if this condition is not met, it will activate this code here. And I forgot to add it, but make sure you have an end at the end because you need to uh, avoid memory leaks, which I'll talk about down here. But um, the else command, if I said if a equals 1, if a equals any value besides 1, it will activate this code here. When If it was a then, it would activate only when a equals 1. And else like then has no limit to the amount of code uh, behind it. As you can see here, you can have multiple lines after the else as long as you have an end at the end. And then then and else can be stacked. You can do if with your condition, then the code you want to execute if it's true, and then you can put an else, and if it's false, it'll execute that code instead. And then you still get out of your end because of memory leaks, which I will not talk about. Memory leaks are really annoying if you're a programmer. You'll, you'll have one in one of your first programs no matter what. What it does is if you have um, anything like this, code you need like this, you might, if you're a beginner, you'll put if with your condition, which I just put A, then, and then your code, and then after part of your code, you wanted to go to a location. Now, what this does is when an if hits a then, it takes, takes up memory for each line of code that it uses after. So if it uses three lines of code, it'll use three times the amount of memory that it would for one line of code. Now, you only have a certain amount of memory on your calculator, and a program will run out. So you need to get the memory back, and you get the memory back by using the end command, the calculator releases the memory back so you don't run out. And then in this situation what you would need to do is move the go to A, get rid of that, and move it after it. It would do the exact same thing. You would just not lose memory instead. And then some advanced uses of uh, the if command. You might not get this, but if you do it can be useful. You don't need it. It's not that important. But if A, if B, all it does is executes if A is false or A if both of them are true. If B is false, it won't activate unless A is false. But if they're both true, then it'll activate the code right here. If there were code like here. Code right here. Because if A is false, it won't allow this to work, and so it'll activate this. If A is true, it'll activate this, and so if B is true, it'll activate this. If A is true, it'll activate this. If B is false, it'll skip over to here, and so on. If you don't get that, it's fine. Uh, it took me a while to get it, too. And then we have another use similar to this, but a little bit different. It uses an else. And in this situation, the if-then-else is linked, but so is this if-else here. So if A is false, 
it will activate this else and activate the code here. If A is true, it'll activate the then, and it'll go to this if, and if B is false then, it will activate this because the else is still linked to this too. And then, still gotta have your end at the end. But again, if you don't get that, it's fine, not many people do. And you won't really need it, it's not a crucial uh, component of a program. But anyway guys, that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.